Okay, so this video is all about rounding, and we're rounding whole numbers, and we're rounding them to the nearest 10. Uh, we've got other videos where we're rounding to the nearest 100, rounding to the nearest 1,000. Um, they're available on this YouTube channel, or on my YouTube channel, um, Learners Grid. Um, but also, uh, they're available on my website, www.learnersgrid.com. Now, what's the point of rounding? Well, because often we don't exactly need to know precisely how many. Uh, it's fine just to be in the ballpark. So rounding off can really help us get a quick gauge of an amount, um, which helps us understand things a little bit more quickly when we don't need to be exact. And as you'll see, we're going really in the rounding process from something that is exact to something that's a bit more general and ballparkish. So what I'm going to do, there are, what are there, five questions here, and I'm going to deal with them one at a time. So let's take a look at question A. It's asking us to round 48 to the nearest ten. So just so you understand what we mean by tens, well, when we count in tens, we don't count like we normally count when we're um, counting in ones, if you like, where we go one, two, three, four, and so on. When we count in tens, we go something like this. We go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. When you get to 100, it goes like 90, 100, 110, 120, and we just add on 10 as we go, right? So let's think of 48. Now, it's, it's closest to which 10? Is it closer to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever? That's what we're trying to find out. So there's a few ways that you can do it. So I'm going to show you the fastest way, if you like, um, first. So if you have 48, Rounding to the nearest 10 is your clue. So you're looking for the tens place value. And this is our units, and this is our tens, our hundreds. We've got no hundreds in this number, and so on and so on as the numbers get bigger. We'll have digits in different place values. But we're dealing with the tenths. So the digit here is kind of like the target digit. Uh, something's going to have to happen to this one. We have to consider what? And this is our indicator digit. The indicator digit is one place value smaller. Uh, in other words, the place value to the immediate right of the target digit or the target place value. And you kind of work to a rule. And the rule is, if the indicator digit, in this case it's in the units, is from 0 to 4, so if this digit is from 0 to 4, that means the target digit, this digit, stays the same. Because I like to say, okay, if it's from 0 to 4, it's small. If, it, if this indicated digit is from 5 to 9, okay, first of all, I consider that like big. Okay, um, what happens then is the target digit goes up by 1. No matter what happens, once you've dealt with the target digit, um, to finish this off, this digit here, this indicated digit, always gets converted to a zero because we, we're not interested in this exact amount anymore. Okay, so let's play that through, shall we? So in 48, we look to our indicated digit, which in this case is the units. It's large, it's big because it's from five to nine. That means that this has to become a five, it goes up, and then this becomes a zero. So rounding 48 to the nearest 10, the answer is 50. Now there's another way to think about it. Uh, if I do it like this with a number line, okay, so I want to do it very approximately. This is a, let's say 40, and let's say this is 50. Okay, and halfway is 45. And what do we want? We want 48. So this would be 46, this would be 47, this would be 48, this would be 49. So 48 goes right here. That's 48. And this spot here is obviously much closer to 50 than it is to 40. So again, you could, if you thought of it like that, you'd immediately see that rounding 48 to the nearest 10, yeah, that's 50. Now you can look at it yet another way, um, and it's a number line way, but sometimes it's, you don't feel confident maybe of, of, or, or you want to draw out your own number line like I just did, um, and that's fine. Uh, you've got a ruler probably, so just grab your ruler and use your ruler as the number line. So again, let's go with instead of four, five, and all that kind of stuff, uh, treat your four like a zero 
uh, a 40, I should say, and treat year five like a 50. And uh, you're looking for 48, so here's 45 for a start off. So 45, 46, 47, 48. So 48 goes about here. And as you can see, it's closer to 50 than it is to 40. So again, we've just confirmed that the correct answer really has to be 50. Okay, I want to clear all that away and we are going to have a look at number or question B. So let's have a look at question B. Now I'm just going to leave question A up here for a few moments because it's not too far away from question B, which is round 42 to the nearest 10. So again, we've got to think, if we think about 10s, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Uh, we kind of know immediately, I hope, that 42 kind of comes here, right? It's between 40 and 50. Um, so it's somewhere in there. It's either going to be 40 or 50, our answer. And the quickest way, as I said, think of it like this. Here's 42. We're rounding to the nearest 10. So we look for the 10s digit, which is here. That becomes our target digit. The next place value over to the right, the next smallest place value is our indicator. So it's a 2. 0 to 4 and 5 to 9 are the keys. So if it's 0 to 4, if the indicator digit is 0 to 4, the target digit does not change. And in this case, it is small. It is from 0 to 4. So this stays a 4. Okay, so that's fine. That stays a 4. And this 2 gets converted into a 0. So the answer to this question is 40. Okay, and as we've already had a look at, we can have a go at putting this on a number line. So let's do that. So here's a quick little number line. Here's 40. Here's 50. Around here's 45. So 41, 42, 43, 44. So 42 is about here. And immediately you can see that it's, it's close to 40. So that makes sense. Okay. So that's question A and B. Uh, I am going to clean all this off now, and we'll have a look at question C. Yeah, so question C says 129, so 129 to the nearest 10. So again, look, let's do it the quick way. So 1, 2, 9, right? Don't forget, from 0 to 4, I consider that small, and from 5 to 9, we can call that big. Okay. Now, we're looking to round to the nearest 10. So here's the tens place value. So this is our um, target digit. This is our indicator digit. Now, the, if the indicator is big, this has to increase by one. And it is big because it's from five to nine. So this isn't a two anymore. This is going to be a three. And then this just converts into a zero. So the answer here is going to be 130. Again, let's have a quick look at a sort of a number line kind of deal. Um, what is it? Uh, 120 and 130, because if I think of the numbers 100, 110, so I'm counting up in tens, 120, 130, I know that 129 is somewhere in here, between 120 and 130, right? So here is 125. 129 is above that, so 6, 7, 8, 9, so here it is. And it's really close to 130, so that makes it pretty obvious that rounding 129 to the nearest 10 has got to be 130. So let's have a look at question D. Question D says round 199 to the nearest 10. Okay, so this will be a little bit more interesting, I suppose. So if I go with 199, so 199. Great. Okay, so it all starts off. Uh, like they all do, I got to identify the tens columns because I'm rounding off to the nearest ten, so that becomes our target digit. And our indicator digit is the next place value to the right. So it's one place value smaller, in which case the units digit. And don't forget our indicators. So zero to four is small, and five to nine is big. So this refers or relates to our indicated digit. So let's look at the indicated digit. It's a nine. It's big, which means the target digit has to go up to 10. Now it becomes a little bit different in this case because, well, going up to 10 is very difficult when we're only looking at this nine. So what happens is this. Essentially, you can write the 10 up here. This zero takes the place of the nine, but 
this one and this one get added. So 1 plus 1 is 2, and this converts to a 0. So, rounded to the nearest 10, it becomes 200. I'll do that one again. It was 190, 9. This is the target, this is my indicator. The indicator is big, it's from 5 to 9. He has to go up to 10. So I put the 0 here and the 1 here. So I'm writing down the numbers like that. This 9 is gone, it's replaced by the 0. This 9 converts to a 0. And this 1 gets added to this 1 to make it 2. And that's where we get our 200 from. Okay, it might help to convert um, to a number line. And if I think of 180, 190, 200, I can see 199 is in here somewhere. Let's do a quick number line. 190, right, and 200, and here's 195. Where's 199? Up here somewhere. And you can see it's right next to 200. So yeah, it's pretty easy to figure out that 199 rounded to the nearest 10 is 200. Okay, so the last one here is also very interesting because I've only got one digit, which is a three. And when I think of my tens, uh, I go up in 10, 20, 30, and the, the three really comes before the 10. And rounded to the nearest 10 looks a bit problematic. So why don't I look at it like this? I use my little number line, 0 to 10, here's 5, where's 3? It's about 4, 3, it's about here. Well, 3 really is closer to 0. So round it off to the nearest 10, it has to be 0, because it certainly isn't 10. I'll tell you that, it's miles away from 10. So that's one way that you can look at it, and actually that makes it really easy to understand. And that's how you round numbers, whole numbers, to 10. It really doesn't even matter how large the numbers are. So for example, we haven't done it yet. Uh, I'll do a real quick one here, because you could get, right? You could get a number that's massive, like let's say, I don't know, 64,240, I don't know, eight. Round it to the nearest 10. Well, man, you don't need to worry. You just need to focus on your target, which is the tens, your indicator, which is the next one over to the right. Everything else will stay the same. Uh, so. 8 is large, so this becomes a 5, this becomes a 0, so the answer is 6, 4, 2, 5, 0, and it's done. It's the same old thing, no matter how big the number is, you focus on your um, target digit, look at the indicator, and work from there. Simple as that.